Hi, let's take a few minutes to talk about video for learning. Now, on this first slide I'm going to show you here, I've called it pause and rewind because I think that simple phrase illustrates how powerful simple video can be. Imagine that there are all these av videos available on the internet at any time that you can watch to learn something. If there's something you don't understand, you can just pause it, maybe pull the slider back and listen to that segment again. Think of how powerful that is, even compared to a, a classroom, particularly large classrooms. Uh, I have to say that I was inspired by Salman Khan, uh, who formed the Khan Academy, who basically was teaching his nephews and nieces mathematics over the internet by creating simple videos, which became hugely popular. So now YouTube is just full of these really good learning videos. So what can we use video for? Well, it can be used to present knowledge. I think that's fairly straightforward but you can take videos of scenarios or real situations or staged scenarios. You can show the operation of equipment or you can demonstrate techniques like cooking. So now I want to talk about the creation of video. And this is one of the reasons why I think it is such a powerful tool for education because essentially it is really easy now to create videos. And we can see that over the last few years where there's been an explosion of user generated content on the internet. But by the same token, there's so much content out there that maybe you don't need to create it at all. So we use the phrase curation for building a course that's maybe built of existing recordings on the internet. Now, I don't really want to talk about curation. Uh, Curation isn't quite as easy as it looks because you have to find the videos that cover the material you want to cover. You have to check, is the context right? Is the quality good enough? Uh, is it accurate? So there's a number, there are challenges in dealing with curated video. Whereas if you've been teaching something for a number of years and maybe have a set of PowerPoint slides or lesson notes, that type of thing, maybe it's just as easy to create those videos yourself. Now you can do this at home or just on your laptop in your office. That's quite easy to, but if you're lucky enough, maybe your institution has a little recording booth like the one that I'm recording in now. It'll have good lighting, a good camera, a good microphone, probably better than you would normally have, and maybe some other equipment as well. And here's, here's an example of another very useful piece of equipment. Uh, this is what's called a stream deck and it allows you to change the format, the layout of your screen that you're recording on to make your recording look a bit more professional, it actually serves some functional uses as well. For instance, I'm a little bit in the way now, so I can just by pressing a button disappear and allow you to see the full screen. Um, so th that can save you work afterwards in editing. Another piece of equipment that's not in this picture that's extremely useful for uh, quickly recording and simply recording is a document camera. A lot of lectures like to just write on the blackboard or on the whiteboard. Well, we can do that on paper, just have a camera looking down at a piece of paper and we can spontaneously create learning materials like that. Now, I'm going to give you an example from uh, uh, a retired lecturer I know from the National College of Ireland who has done excellent statistics videos that are hugely popular on YouTube uh, called Eugene O'Loughlin. And this first example here is where he's just recording his PowerPoint screen, as I'm doing now. The second one is where he's recording Excel. Now you can record any computer application that could be possibly to do a particular task and to show people how to do a particular, particular task or the outputs of a particular task or to show them how to use a piece of software. The third one is the one with the document camera where he points it down at a piece of paper and he works his way through problems, teaching people how to do these uh, problems in statistics. Three very simple and powerful ways just to uh, create learning videos. Now, one of the things about video is video traditionally requires a huge amount of effort in production. And one of the reasons we believe it, it's becoming more 
useful is because it is possible to make them with much less effort. But you do need to consider certain ideas if you want to create a video with less effort. Uh, we don't want to be recording and re-recording and editing, so prepare well, which makes it less likely to make mistakes. Prepare a good set of PowerPoint slides and uh, just rehearse it. Uh, and as I say, when you're doing, if you're doing PowerPoint, remember to use good PowerPoint technique. And I will show you a slide now shortly on that, but I don't want to dwell on that. Um, what our aim is to minimize post-production, what comes afterwards, okay? Uh, and as I say, preparing well helps with that. But a, a very important thing is avoid perfectionism. Tolerate errors. I'm making errors here as I speak to you. Most of these errors I won't take out. If I do make a serious error, what I'll do is I'll be quiet for a few seconds and then I'll go back and repeat where I made the error. And that's very easy to find on the recording later and cut that out. So these, these, what I'm trying to show here is that by using some of these tips and tricks, we can hugely reduce the effort involved in making a recording. I did mention good PowerPoint practice. That, this is a way if you use simple good PowerPoint practice, um, you'll make a much higher quality video with very little extra effort. And if you want to improve the impact of these videos, there are some tips about that as well. Keep them short. Uh, give an activity after the video because we know that there's a trouble trying to keep the learner's attention during the video. So if something is going to happen after the video, they're more likely to pay attention to the video. And a, an activity, an acceptable activity would be a quiz. Uh, now a quiz, if the learner knows there's going to be a quiz at the end of the video, they're more likely to pay better attention and hopefully take some notes because research has shown that taking notes, particularly by hand, actually improves attention and retention. Those quizzes can even be used again for practice, spaced practice or spaced repetition, which helps memory as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you're convinced that simple video is a very powerful tool for learning.